Now we're going to talk about regulators. Why regulators? Well, I'm amazed at just how many questions in the equipment exam are about them. In fact, there seems to be so many regulator questions that just by answering them alone, you're probably going to pass the whole exam with flying colours. Now, you don't need to be an expert or a mechanic. You just need to know just enough uh, to pass information on to others and of course to pass an exam. But and and of course, if you want to develop a if you've developed a deeper interest in them, you can always go on a servicing course, um, in which case then you'll be so much more valuable to any future employer. But first of all, let's talk about this the first stage of the regulator. This is the whole bit with the hoses coming off here, and it's also the bit that connects uh, to the cylinder. So you can see that this one is a, a DIN regulator, and this uh, screws directly into the cylinder valve. So let's take a look at some of the questions that you might be asked about the first stage of a regulator. We've already talked about that the fact that the DIN valve screws uh, right into the cylinder valve. Now this might, there might be a question regarding why this might be a good idea. Uh, and of course the answer to that question is because it provides a strong connection and also a better seal. Okay, so the real job of the first stage is to bring the high pressure cylinder pressure right down to the intermediate pressure. Uh, which is in these hoses. Now generally the intermediate pressure here is around 7 to 10 bar above surrounding pressure. So it's already brought the pressure down a long way from maybe say 200 bar in the cylinder to you know 7 to 10 bar in the hoses. But how does it do this? Well inside this first stage there's either a diaphragm or a piston that adjusts according to pressure changes. It's a common question, but be careful because as soon as people see that word diaphragm, they often just associate it with the second stage and jump to the wrong conclusions, get the wrong answer. But this is about the diaphragm or the piston that's in the first stage. Now to help prevent problems with that diaphragm or the piston with uh, doing its job correctly, some regulators are fitted with an environmental seal. Now this environmental seal, it prevents contaminants from getting into the works and it also helps protect against freezing. Um, it it, it uh, prevents it from freezing up in cold water, which makes the regulator go into free flow. Now we can move on to the second stage and look at some of the questions that you might be asked about the second stage. So the function of the second stage is to bring that intermediate pressure down from a pressure that the diver can breathe. And that pressure would be, well, whatever, whatever pressure is surrounding the diver at the time, depending on what depth they're at. But how does this work? Well, as you breathe in, it sucks in that big diaphragm towards you. And this pushes a lever which opens a downstream valve. It's often aided by a pilot valve. Now both the downstream valve and the pilot valve are to be found here in the second stage. Now downstream, that means that the, that the valve will open with the flow of air. And the reason why that's important in real life as well as in paddy questions is because if there was any malfunction, the valve would be stuck in the open position and then loads of gas will come out or go into free flow. Um, which would be opposed to it being the other way around and seizing up and starving you of any. Now this design of going into free flow is called failsafe, a failsafe design. Now all of these words on the board, they're likely to come up in paddy questions or answers. But as we found out, all of these actions of the regulator, all of that, it all starts with the diver breathing in. Breathing in through the mouthpiece here. Now, when the diver does breathe in, they should only get dry gas. If there's any water that gets in their mouth, it's very likely that there's a split somewhere in this mouthpiece or these lugs have broken off, one, one, one or the other. 
Now, I keep using the word gas instead of air. And the reason is because nearly all equipment is designed to be used to up, um, up to 40% enriched air nitrox without any modification. Anything higher than 40% could create problems with oxidation and that would need special equipment. Now, once the diver has breathed in, all of this takes place. And then when the diver then breathes out, all of, the all of the exhaust gas comes out of these valves and into the water. Now, it's the action of this expelled air bubbling away that gives the system the name open circuit. And that's opposed to a closed circuit rebreather that recycles the waste breath. Now, it's interesting to note that divers using open circuit, they normally use breath control to fine tune their buoyancy. But closed circuit rebreather divers, they, they have to use their BCD inflation to, to, uh, to fine tune their buoyancy. Now, of course, one of the benefits of closed circuit is that the ratio of gases in the breathing mix remains constant. It remains the same throughout the whole dive. Sometimes there's questions about a balanced regulator. Now, the question normally asks what are the benefits of a balanced regulator? I mean, as opposed to a non-balanced regulator. And there's always three benefits, and they're all to do with the ease of breathing. A balanced regulator will be easier to breathe regardless of the cylinder pressure. So if it's easy to breathe when the cylinder's full, it'll be just as easy to breathe if it's nearly empty. The same with depth. If it's easy to breathe when you're near the surface, then it'll be just as easy at 30 metres or 100 feet. And the last and third uh, benefit is to do with the alternate air source. A balanced regulator will make breathing just as easy if one diver or two divers are breathing from it at the same time. Talking of alternate air sources, there are a couple of questions that sometimes trip people up. What you need to remember is that alternate air, source don't, uh, alternate air sources don't have to be yellow. They can be any colour. They don't have to come over the right hand side. The only thought, important thing about alternate air sources is they do have to be found in the triangle. In fact, some alternate air sources are combined with a diver's BCD inflator hose. And in this case, in the event of an out of air emergency, the diver should then have to breathe from this themselves and give their primary regulator to their buddy to breathe from. Okay. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you that there are a lot of regulator questions in the equipment exam for PADI instructors. In this video, I've covered about 25 of those questions. Every time I've mentioned anything, it wasn't just idle chit chat. Virtually every sentence was linked to one question or another that you might find on your exams. But to make sure you were listening, as usual, I've put a lot of questions in the next lesson. So good luck with those, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video lesson.